Hi everyone, my name is Beth from the West Dallas Public Library and welcome to another episode of the Let's Go on Vacation Book Club, where this week we are traveling to the Bermuda Triangle by reading together Where is the Bermuda Triangle? Now over the last couple days we've learned that traveling by boat in the Bermuda Triangle isn't a great idea. So maybe if we try flying, it'd be a little safer trip. So chapter four, lost, oh no, lost in the sky. <sighs> After the five Navy planes in Flight 19 vanished, more stories of disappearing airplanes began to mount up. In 1948, a plane called the Star Tiger was headed toward Bermuda. The flight had started in London with 31 passengers and a crew on board. The weather was beautiful in Bermuda that day, and the pilot called the tower to say the plane would arrive on time. But it didn't. After that radio call, the Star Tiger was never heard from again. The U.S. Air Force immediately sent out a search team. They searched the ocean for five solid days. Not a single piece of the airplane was ever found. The British investigated the disappearance as the plane was British and Bermuda is a British territory. They didn't turn up enough evidence to explain with certainty what happened. In November, of, oh, no one could ever figure out what happened to the Star Tiger. The plane had four engines. They couldn't have all died at once. The investigators said it was one of the most baffling problems they'd ever dealt with, and it would forever remain a mystery. The very next year, the star Ariel disappeared after taking off from Bermuda on a perfectly calm day. The star Ariel was a sister to the star Tiger, the same kind of plane. Somehow, without explanation and without ever calling for help, the sister plane vanished on the same route through the triangle. Meanwhile, another plane had gone missing near the coast of Florida in 1948. The passengers of the DC-3 were families on their way home to Miami from a Christmas vacation in Puerto Rico. It was a perfectly clear night, no storms to worry about at all. The pilot called the Miami control tower to say they were only 50 miles away. They would be landing soon. Then the plane simply vanished forever. In November, 1956, a plane, just like the rescue plane from flight 19, exploded one night in midair after leaving Bermuda. A huge ship in the water saw the explosion in the sky. And then, in January 1962, another Air Force plane vanished near the Triangle. In August 1963, two large military jets took off together from an airfield in southern Florida. Something terrible happened to both planes, but neither pilot called for help. Why not? Broken pieces of the planes were found floating in different parts of the Atlantic Ocean, both in the Bermuda Triangle. The next unexplained event happened in 1965. An Air Force plane called a C-119, or flying boxcar, took off from Florida, headed toward the Bahamas. The pilot called into the tower when the plane was only about 45 minutes away from its destination. Everything seemed fine. He reported no trouble. The weather was good and the plane was expected to arrive on time. Instead, it vanished completely and no one knows why. Then, in January 1967, three planes disappeared in the same week in the Bermuda Triangle, all in good weather. On Halloween in 1991, a Broom and Cougar jet flying near the Triangle disappeared from all radar screens in an instant. That plane was never seen again. 
A number of years later, another plane vanished from the radar while flying near, flying toward Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas. Half an hour later, it popped back up on the radar screen and then disappeared forever. And the mystery continues. By some counts, more than 75 planes have disappeared. What's happening? Is the power of the Bermuda Triangle getting stronger? Chapter five, strange answers. What kind of strange unnatural force could make ships and boats disappear in the Bermuda Triangle? Over the years, people have come up with a long list of possible explanations. One idea is there's something weird going on with the magnetic forces that surround Earth near the Bermuda Triangle. There is some evidence that compasses do work strangely in the area. The leader on Flight 19 had trouble with his compasses. Other pilots have reported the same thing. Sometimes their compasses start spinning wildly and won't point north at all. Even Christopher Columbus had trouble with his compass on his journey to the New World. Why? Does the Bermuda Triangle have a strange power over compasses? To understand the answer, you need to know how compasses work. A compass is a tool that helps people know what direction they're going, north, south, east, or west. The compass has a magnetized needle or pointer inside. The needle is mounted on a pin so it can spin around. It is attracted to the magnetic forces that encircle the earth. Some people think a compass will always point to the North Star or the North Pole called True North. But that's not right. The needle always points to something called Magnetic North. Magnetic North isn't right at the North Pole. It's a spot near the North Pole where the magnetic forces come together. Magnetic North is always slowly moving around the globe. Why? because the spinning of the Earth is the force that creates the, ma the magnetic fields, and the Earth spins. And as the Earth spins, the hot liquid core of the Earth changes shape a little bit. It changes the magnetic fields. So, Magnetic North is always moving. Some days it can be located 50 miles away from its usual spot. On average, though, it moves about six miles every year. Today, sailors and pilots know that True North and Magnetic North aren't always the same place. Magnetic North is a few hundred miles away from the North Pole. So when pilots use a compass today, they always know they have to make a correction. They have to add or subtract from where the needle points. The amount of correction depends on where the pilot is on the globe. When Columbus sailed to the New World, he didn't know that there was a difference between true north and magnetic north, but he guessed that his compass was pointing to something other than the North Star, and he was right. But was there some kind of strange magnetic force near the Bermuda Triangle? No. In fact, the only thing that's unusual about the Bermuda Triangle is that it's lined up with one of the few places on Earth where Magnetic North and True North are often the same. Sometimes compasses spin wildly in the Bermuda Triangle, but it's not some strange unknown force making it happen. It can happen anywhere on Earth. A compass needle will swing back and forth if the waves are choppy at sea. Wild winds can make a compass needle dance around in an airplane. It doesn't mean there's anything strange going on. It just means compasses work best when they're held level and still. In the 1970s, some people thought UFOs might be involved with the strange disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. They said that each time a boat or plane disappeared in the area, the humans Humans might have been kidnapped or captured by an alien spaceship. Where did that idea come from? The UFO idea probably started when the flying boxcar disappeared in 1965. 
the Gemini 4 spacecraft was circling the Earth at the same time. Gemini 4 was the first space mission in which American astronauts walked in space outside the capsule. During the flight, astronaut James McDivitt reported that he saw a UFO just a day or so before the flying boxcar disappeared. He said the UFO was a white cylinder with big arms sticking out. He even took a picture of it. A few years later, a group of people who kept track of UFO stories put those two facts together. They came up with an idea about what happened to the flying boxcar. They claimed that aliens were there that day and might have snatched the plane right out of the air. But James McDivitt reminded everyone that UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object. It means anything flying that cannot be identified. Not just spaceships from another planet. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of UFOs in space all the time. They are pieces of satellites that broke apart or pieces of rockets that broke off when a space shuttle was launched. These UFOs are sometimes called space junk. James McDivitt never claimed to have seen an alien spaceship over the Bermuda Triangle. He just said there was something in the sky that he could not identify. Okay, so that is where I'll stop today. So we've got boats and planes disappearing now in the Bermuda Triangle. So we'll see if we can get any explanation of that. This has been episode three of the Let's Go on Vacation book club from the West Dallas Library. Join us tomorrow as we continue on, hopefully safely, through the Bermuda Triangle. Bye.